In this video, we're going to learn how to create a procedural bridge for one part that uses a series of modifiers. So it's completely procedural and completely easy to change. So if you go ahead and move some elements, you can see that they easily adjust. This video is a direct response from a previous video that I did on creating a procedural bridge with Blender 2.8, which was essentially just a very quick time lapse. Christoph said that was far too quick. I couldn't follow your inputs at all. It's amazing what you can do, but as a tutorial, it was wasted time. Thanks, Chris. So hopefully you prefer this one now. So let's go ahead and show you how this bridge is generated. In case you're interested in the cars, they come from the traffic add-on. Link is in the description. So first, I'm going to walk you through how this model is built and then we're going to build it again from scratch so if we click on this object here it's got a series of modifiers so let's start turning them all off one by one and start from the beginning so this is the section we're going to model and then we mirror that section onto the other side with a mirror modifier and then we array that as long or as short as we want and then we use one curve modifier to deform curviness of the road and then I like to use two curve modifiers. So the second one is this curve over here, which determines the height of it. This way, I'm sure that the height stays the same at all times and I can control the height and the curvature independently. And then we have a couple of other goodies here. So as you can see, all of our supports, they're quite short at the moment. We can make them longer in the actual section, but if we do that, then they're all gonna go, as you can see, in a sort of a normal direction of the actual road. They're not gonna go directly down. So to alleviate that, we are going to use a hook modifier to help them go down. And then if I show the ground again, we probably don't wanna have supports here so boats and larger ships can pass. So in that case, we use a Boolean modifier to get rid of these two. And then for the fun of it, we might as well put the two cars or three or as many as you want. These cars come from the traffic add-on. So I'm going to hide all this. We'll keep these curves as they are. And let's start with a simple plane. Always good idea to start with a simple plane. Sorry, Cube. I prefer planes. I hope you don't take it personal. And now let's start modeling the actual size so this plane is two meters what we need is a section of about eight meters or so for two cars to fit in comfortably it's a bridge so cars tend to go a little bit faster so there's the opportunity it's good to make the lanes a little bit wider than they would be in usual which is i think about 2.5 meters so this is two so let's make it actually six and a half so let's put this 4.5 meters and now e for extrude z and 0.2 now we want to make I'm not sure it's a pavement area for pedestrians necessarily, but definitely some kind of curb to separate the cars if need be. There could also be people that travel there. E for extrude, Y, and let's make that 2.5 meters wide. E for extrude, Z. Now let's make the guardrail or the parapet 1.1. E, Y, E, Z. And this is going to go below, so let's hide our road for a second, our surface rather. And now E again. And we wanna make sure that this goes to the edge and so does this. So I'm gonna click on this edge here first. We want to make sure that we have the coordinates enabled. So press the M bar in case you don't see it as you do on my screen. And then we wanna change from global to local and change the Y to zero. That's going to go exactly at our orange point, which is our object origin. Next, let's add a modifier. So go to the modifier tabs or properties and click on add modifier. And we want to add mirror, change the axis from X to Y. And now we have a perfect mirror. And as you can see, the bottom doesn't touch yet. So we need to duplicate what we just did with the bottom area. So select this edge, go on the sidebar and change the Y to zero. And now it's touching. Now let's make this section a little bit longer. So I'm going to alt click this whole edge loop here. And now let's just drag it. And by the way, I have my gizmos enabled. So move and scale. Okay, so now that we are happy with this section, let's add an array modifier. Everything is fine to keep as is. Let's just change the count to 50. That's a good count. And next, let's add some materials. Let's create a new one and let's call it concrete. And then let's select another one. And let's call it asphalt. And now I'm in material preview mode when I'm using this HDRI. And with the asphalt one, let's change the base color to something darker and then press assign. Next, we wanna add some lanes. So if we press control R to subdivide or we use 
the loop cut tool from the toolbar. If you use the loop cut tool from the toolbar, click and hold. And then click and hold again. And then back to the original, go into face selection. And now let's create a new material and let's call it paint and assign. And we can keep that one white. Okay, so now we have some material markings. Next, let's assign our curves. So if we go to the modifier properties, I'm going to minimize these, add a new modifier, and let's call that one curve. So it's in the deform curve. For the curve object, first I'm going to choose this curve, and you can see our road automatically starts to curve. Now, if we want to, we can just do everything with one curve. So I can go ahead and move some of the points here. And as you can see, our road adjusts. But as I said initially, I like to be more precise about it. So that's why I have two curves to start with. So clicking on our bridge object again, add another curve modifier. Let's select the second curve. And now it's going up. Now, a couple of things to note. If I go to top view, you would notice that if I turn off all my modifiers, I modeled it in a way that the array is in the X direction. I found from many experiments that that's the best way to work with arrays based on a curve. So make sure that you're modeling along the X axis. Because the curves otherwise, they're a bit funny and they're quite finicky, but this way they work seamlessly. And as you can see, the deform axis is the X direction. Now that doesn't mean that we can't change this to any way we want. In fact, if I go to the curve and move some points really around, really deform it, you can see it doesn't necessarily need to be in the X direction. It just needs to start from that direction. And now we can see we don't have enough sections. So if we just click on our object, go to the array and increase the count, it continues to follow both curves in the X and the vertical deformation. This video is sponsored by you. That's right, you. With your help, I can create more videos just like this one. You can help me by becoming a patron where you have access to the files and further in-depth and behind the scenes videos, or you can also buy the models on Gumroad and elsewhere. In addition, if you're an architect or designer or want to learn how to use Blender for architecture design fast, my course over here is probably the best and fastest way to get started with using Blender for architecture. The beauty about this system is that we can go ahead now and add as much detail as we want to our small tiny section because the whole bridge is basically procedural. As an example, let's start adding some sort of support. So I'm going to duplicate this face here, shift D, escape, and then let's scale it way down with S, move that face down, and then E for extrude, and extrude it way down. And we can see now that we have structural supports. Now a couple of things, first off, the structure may be a little bit too dense and then it bends in an awkward angle and the reason for that is it's because it's going against the normal. But there's a little trick behind that with the hook modifier. So let's go and edit our section and as you can see we have this section and it's beautiful because we can just keep on editing and editing just one section. So what I'm going to do is make the section a little bit longer so we have less supports in the overall section. So now as you can see our supports reduced. Let's move the support column edge way up. So somewhere along here. Now we're going to assign a vertex group. So create a group and press assign with just that face selected, the bottom face. And as you can see, now our columns are short. I mean, they're not even columns because they're not reaching. So this bridge is floating in the air. Next, let's add an empty. I'm going to right click here, shift right click to put the cursor, shift A, empty. Plane axis, move them somewhere. I always like to change the size of my empty so it's more visible. And if we click the bridge element again, and let's rename this bridge, modify tools. So we have mirror, array, two curves, and now add a hook modifier. So that's in the deform column, hook. Next, we want to click our empty and we want to choose our vertex group. Now, check out what happens when we move our empty down. So all of our vertices go down and they're not completely vertical as you can see, but they're definitely much better than what they were before. If you want to get them even more vertical, if you go back to the original and move this even higher and let's see what happens now. Yep. And now they're pretty much vertical because they're essentially just going in the down direction. Now I'm going to adjust the colors a little bit. So we have our concrete, which would be slightly darker. 
And let's add just a little bit more detail here now. So I'm going to go to this section here again. Now roads usually have a bit of curvature where the middle is higher than the side. So water drains nicely on the edges. So let's add a loop cut. Control R. Click on this face. Move it somewhere over here. Now I'm going to select these two faces. And move them slightly up. Let's add another lane. Actually, I don't know how wide this is. But yeah, sure, why not? So we'll add a lane here. And control R for another loop cut. Then control R for a loop cut. In fact, let's undo that. Control R. And with the scroll wheel, scroll up. So we get two loop cuts. Now let's scale them up. Select this and paint it white. Boom. Now we have a two lane road. That's probably going a little bit too high. So let's put these slightly down. So let's hide the ground again. H. Click on our single object so we can see it better. And now we can give a bit of sculptural feel to our bridge. So let's drag these out. Control R to create another loop cut down. Go to face selection. Alt click to select all these faces and move them down. And we want to click this edge loop here. Move that further down. Now let's select this edge again. Control B. Something along these lines here. Cool. Now we have somewhat of a sculptural bridge. Now I really quickly want to show you an old project of mine, which I'll link in the description below, but it's actually like the exact same thing here that we just did. A bit more complicated in regards to the modeling, but essentially it's the same thing. We start with one side, then that side is mirrored, and then arrayed, and then I'm just playing with that little one mirrored section here to create something that's really cool and a bit more different. So if I scroll here along the video, you see, you see I had a lot of fun making this. So this bridge is really not that different from the bridge that we just created. In fact, this one, you see, I didn't think about the hook because somebody asked in the comments about how we can make that a little bit better. So back to our bridge here now. And so if you want to add a little bit more detail or if we don't like the way that it curves, we can always go ahead and add more loop cuts. So if I go and press Control R in edit mode and add two more loop cuts, you can see that it smooths out even better than it did before. The last thing that I want to show you is that we can use a Boolean box to get rid of these supports that are landing in the water. So first I'm going to move my empty for the hook a little bit lower. So they go all the way down, put the cursor there, shift A, mesh, paint, scale, R, Z, smooth that slightly down. Then in edit mode, E for extrude. Now I have the bow tool, which comes bundled with Blender. It's very useful and I highly recommend it. So I'm just going to click and then shift click the bridge and then brush Boolean difference. And that's the easiest way to get rid of that. And it turns off the visibility and makes it all nice for us. So if you want the bridge to go really high, we need to just change this section. So let's make it super high. Of course, we have a couple of things that we need to adjust then, like our empty and our bullion box, but it's all possible. I think there was a really nice picture of a bridge in Japan where it looked like it was that steep. Thanks very much for watching this. The file is available on Patreon and also on Gumroad and elsewhere. And this video is a result as a lot of people's comments on one of the old videos that I had. So thank you guys for those comments and for making me create a better video.